In this series of short films, Steph Strange answers frequently asked questions about how reading for pleasure and sharing stories can greatly improve literacy, the particular issues around books that may be faced by children in care, and how you can help your child on their journey to becoming a reader. My child can't stay still long enough. Is there any point? Yes, so attention is something that nearly every single one of the children I've ever worked with has struggled with. Um, they don't have the five minute attention span that it takes to read a picture book. So many reasons for that. It could be that they've not had the experience of sitting down with someone and sharing a story together. They could struggle with self-regulating. It could be they're hyper aware. Lots of different things that could be the reason for that. Good news is that that can be changed. Um, I once worked with a girl when she was in year one. When I first started working with her, she would be jumping up and down from the chair continually, roaming the room. You could see just in her face that she was in a state of mild panic all the time. It took a long time, um, a lot of stories, a lot of sitting nicely and closely but safely together. But by the end of it, she was one of those children that teachers would have to come and find after an hour or so because I just couldn't bear to say no to her please. Just one more step, please, one more story. <laughs> What do I do when my child can't settle for a story? Okay, so the first thing I would say is just keep reading. Keep on going. Find a time of the day if you can where it's a bit quieter so they can settle down. But if they're not able to settle down and sit next to you quietly to listen to a book, don't worry. Don't force it. Just keep going. It's fine. Um, if you can, say things like, oh, look, this picture is amazing. Or, oh, I wonder what's going to happen on the next page. Or, I wonder why this character is sad. Nine times out of ten, the story will draw them back in again and they'll end up sitting next to you. However, again, if they don't do that, don't worry about it. I know it can feel horrible when you're sitting there reading a story and your child is wandering around the room, but you are having an impact even if it doesn't feel like it at the time. Um, you can have another activity on the go as well if you wanted to. Have some Play-Doh or some drawing or colouring. Um, my oldest son would not cope with that at all, he's six and he would not cope with colouring but my youngest often goes off and plays trains while I'm reading. It's not particularly pleasant because you're not sitting down reading next to them but he's still listening the whole time and developing those language skills. A question no one thinks to ask, what is the teller of the story getting out of it? So what you're getting out of it, well it's going to really help your emotional connection with the child sitting together, engaging in the story together, laughing at the funny bits, trying to work out what's going to happen next. All these things are going to really help strengthen your relationship, which is obviously going to really help you. Um, also, reading out loud has a really positive impact on your brain. It increases your memory, it increases your vocabulary, it really increases and helps with your communication skills, so obviously that's all good. Um, there was also a study that was done which was all about what relaxes you. So it showed that it was much better than having a break and having a cup of tea or coffee, for example. Just six minutes of reading reduces the stress by 68%. Um, it lowers your heart rate, relaxes your muscles. Um, another study found that it increases your self-esteem and it relieves um, symptoms of depression. So all these things obviously are going to have a massive impact on you yourselves.